Hey you two, welcome to Clarity Concepts, Mechanics of Solids, part one of force. I'm very excited for this video. Let us get into this. And guys, this video is about introduction to forces and I'm all excited to explain you all about forces. So let us go. So first, let us see what is force. And as you can see the background, may the force be with you. I'm a Star Wars fan. If you, you know, if any of you are Star Wars fans, please drop a like down there. So let us get into the definition of force. So guys, let me first talk about the golden apple. So you might ask me like, what is all this related with? Okay, the golden apple is the one that fell on Isaac Newton's head. So Sir Isaac Newton is almost like the legendary person in physics and mechanics. So he formulated the force and he experimented a lot with regards to force. So let us see what does he mean by force? So Newton's first law, I understand that most of you guys already understand what is Newton's laws, but let me make it easier for you so that you never forget it. Newton's first law states that every body continues in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled by an external agency acting on it. This leads to the definition of force, which I'll get into it right away. Guys, as you can see, there's a spherical crystal ball, okay, of a certain mass, okay, of certain mass being rested there, as you can see, beautiful. It's not moving at all, okay. Every one of us knows that when you drop or when you keep a ball somewhere, it's going to be there, okay, unless there is something going to act on it. So that is what Newton is trying to say in his first law, that a body will never move, okay, until you ask it or until you, you know, induce a force on it. So that's how he defines force. So let's see, let's just define. Force is an external agency which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform linear motion of the body. So basically, if a body is moving, if you want to change it or stop its course, you have to apply force. Or if you want to move a body from rest, you have to again apply force. So that's how Newton you know, formulates his first law. So let me apply a force on the particular spherical ball. So let's see what will happen. Whoa. The ball just moved. Okay, we all know that it's super basic. I don't need to be extremely, you know, um, specific about that. So, but Newton thought a lot about it. So, when I applied a force, the body moved. He wanted to know how it moved and how can he formulate it using mathematics. So, that's what is Newton's second law all about. Newton's second law states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the impressed force and it takes place in the direction of the force acting on it so guys the ball just moved okay as you can see i applied the force towards the right side of the video and the ball moved towards the right side of the video so that that is the force moved the body in the direction of the applied force and also if you observe properly what is momentum momentum is the product of mass into velocity of any body so if there is a body which is at rest, that is zero velocity, then the ball is having zero momentum. Let us see in the second law, what did Newton try to say? Newton says the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to force. So if you clearly apply it, you will see that F is equal to differential of momentum with respect to time. So we know that D of mv by dt therefore f equals to mass into dv by dt because mass is constant you see the ball is not changing its mass but the velocity changed after applying the force so dv by dt so the rate of change of velocity is acceleration so that's how we get f equals to ma so what are the types of forces that can be induced on a body okay you might ask this question so let us see there is frictional force that is when I applied the force the ball was rolling on the ground and the ground was applying a resistive reaction to the ball that is it was stopping it from moving. Next is a tensile or tension force. This force is seen in strings or in cables. As you can see the ball is being tied with a string and it's hung okay and due to the weight of the ball okay considering there is gravity do not forget gravity okay gravity is always there is a gravitational force. The ball is being you know, pulled downwards and due to which there is a tensile force induced in the body. That is the string here. Next, we have normal force. That is when you keep a ball on a surface 
there is a force exerted by the surface to the ball well the ball is exerting weight load to the ground now next is the air resistance force so whenever there is a force okay exerted by air or wind breeze okay as you can see here the arrow marks are indicating the streamline flow of air but they are going around it but there are some of the components of air that is pushing it so there is force here too next we are seeing the spring force we all know what is spring force as you can see if i compress the spring it's going to have some resilience and push the ball away that's another type of force so these are the basic types of force and never forget there is gravitational force in all of these aspects but this is universal that is i can talk about these kind of forces on planet earth mars jupiter or any other planet but the gravitational force is going to change so i didn't add it here but you guys know that gravitational force is a real thing and now guys let us check out about the characteristics of a force so let me start with a small elaboration so consider a wall with the perpendicularity that is 90 degrees with the ground and the wall next let us have a ladder okay that is being rest on the wall and there is a man now standing on the wall at 2 meters alongside the ladder so now let us see what are the various components of this free body diagram and yeah free body diagram is nothing but the important things being mentioned in a very simplistic manner so an engineer can understand the problem so these are the various other components that is a b and c are the various points that have uh, marked uh, for you know understanding or addressing purposes and guys these are the characteristics so that is the magnitude of the force need to be mentioned that is 600 newtons and also the point of application i just can't say 600 newtons and end it we need to know where is the force applied so that is at point c that is two meters alongside the ladder next is the line of action okay that is the the arrow mark that you can see there okay like an arrow mark that indicates where the force is acting next is the direction that is downwards so this will indicate which direction is the force acting so these are the characteristics of the forces and i will elaborate more about um, the resolution of the forces and also the components of forces in the next upcoming videos and guys if you want to know more about the units and the standard of units in mechanics please do mention in the comments below i will get back to you with another video and guys thanks for watching and please consider subscribing we are looking forward to you and see you on the other side bye bye